gone out with worthwhile stuff and nudged me when I said enough. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I say that prayer for you because my wife, she just cannot understand at all why anybody would want to listen to me talk. It's not funny. There's a little plaque she has at home on the wall, and every time I go out to a group, by the way, I have to talk for free because it's not like nobody paid to listen. So. The plaque says this. A talk that's full of sparkling wit will keep its hearers grinning as long as the end of it is close to the beginning. So I'm going to keep the end of this talk real close to the beginning. But one of the things I want to get across to you, I'm 78 years old. I'm an old man. So you need to, yeah, exactly. You need to understand where I'm coming from. Let me tell you, I was born before television. Yeah. <laughs> there was no such thing as polio shots, frozen foods, Xerox machines, frisbees. There was no radar, there were no cell phones, there was no internet. Way back when, you know, man had not invented air conditioning or clothes dryers. No, my mom would go out and hang my clothes upon the clothesline. Let the air dry it so it would smell good. Laser beams? No, no way. No way. You know, I realize I'm old. I'll tell you how old I am. My wife and I got married first and then lived together afterwards. Doesn't seem to happen today, does it? Every family at that point in my life seemed to have a father and a mother. Every family. Until I was about 40, I referred to every man as sir and every woman as man. It was a long time ago, but I can still remember that. I want you to know where I'm coming from. That's why I'm telling you this story. You should always know where the person is coming from who's talking to you. You know what? I was born before gay rights. There was no computer dating, no dual careers, no daycare centers, and no group therapy. I'm old. My life was governed by the Ten Commandments, good judgment, common sense, and a very strong Catholic tradition. So much so that every Wednesday night at six o'clock, we gather around the radio. Anybody know what that radio is? <laughs> we did have radio. And we prayed the rosary. Every night, I was taught to know the difference between right and wrong. You know, normally they give me a stool so I can stand on it. So I don't have to keep doing it. But it's okay, Mark. I won't hold that against you. I was brought up in the time when it was actually a privilege, a privilege to serve your country. It was actually a privilege, even more so, to be a part of this great nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Having, oh, having a meaningful relationship with me Back in those days, and I got along with my cousins, okay. That was a meaningful relationship. Time sharing meant time on Sunday when we all gathered around the table and talked to each other. That was time sharing, not condominium buying. As I look around the world today, this is what I see. I see that we're at war, and we're at war with the devil. And I think sometimes he's winning, and that bothers me. And then 
celebrate the Eucharist at World Youth Day. And I know there's hope because you are important and what you do matters. So thank you for that. I visit Lucas Oil Stadium and I see thousands and thousands and thousands of young people worshiping and praising God with chance other things. And I think to myself, we're in pretty good hands. Thank you. That's you. Thank you. You are important, and what you do matters. I look here today at a promise to keep, and I think back. sound like I'm chewing on this thing? <laughs> I think I am. It's kind of licorice flavored, so you'll have to bear with me. But I look around at you, and I think back on 25 years, over 12,000 mentors, 12,000 mentors, standing teaching younger children and students about chastity. And I think to myself, yeah, we're in pretty good shape. Let the devil keep it coming. Because we got what it takes to make it. I think back on the time and there were a hundred and twenty and youth that have been taught by you and your peers of the past. 120,000 have heard peer mentors say let's search for the universal call to holiness that we all have. Every one of us is called to serve. You answered that call. You are important. And what you do matters. And I say thanks. I say thanks to the 12,000 that went before you. I say on behalf of my granddaughters, thanks. Because I've heard them come home talk about with me what this program means to them. You know what? You're not finished. You're not finished. You think you're finished? You're wrong. You need to take that. What you've been teaching, what you've been living, and continue to live it on college campuses, in the service, at your jobs. Why? Because you are important. You are the young church. It angers me when I hear people say, you kids are the future church. No, you're not. You are the young church of today. I get angry when I hear people talk about the condition of the Catholic Church today. With what is happening with some of our priests. And I try to think back, and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing right now. Think back on the number of occasions in your life where a priest has played a very important role. I'd like to get rid of this thing if I could, but I'm afraid if I yell too much, then I'll 
really a sound boy, so whoever's praying for that out there, stop it. Okay? The whole idea of every priest in the world taking the abuse because of a few. My life has been touched by thousands of priests they've made a difference in my life in every important event that has taken place in my life good priests in the catholic tradition have been there for me <clears throat> when we talk about the church and the things that are going on in the church. I am proud to be a Catholic. I'm proud to be a Catholic. I'm a proud person to be the son of our mother church. And when I look out and I see all of you young, bright, enthusiastic people willing to stand up for what you believe. I know that we're in good hands. I know that the church is going to be there stronger than ever for my granddaughters. You are called to pursue universal holiness and you haven't yet fulfilled that call until you live the rest of your life. I had great examples coming up. My mother and father were married for 60 years before my father died. My mother and father-in-law were married 67 years before my father-in-law died. On the night I asked my wife to marry me, I asked her, please, marry me. I need to have someone like you to make sure I make it to heaven. And that strong woman who's the queen of my household said yes and has been there every step of the way to make sure that Bob Tully makes it to eternal life with Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. When I was a boy in high school as a freshman, 
I used to kneel down beside my bed at night and say, please, dear God, please surround me with beautiful women. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, about eight years ago, I sat down and thinking, my mother was a beautiful woman in more ways than I can ever imagine. <coughs> my wife is my key to heaven, because without her, I probably never make it. I learned from her faith strong, great. She's one of those beautiful and strong women. I looked at my daughter who was born, and what I saw was a beautiful young lady who still to this day calls me every night and says, I love you, Dad. So much so that I can't hardly believe it. Thanks for being my dad. And then, I think more along, and I have five beautiful granddaughters. This is when I first started to learn about prayer. I thought to myself, I'm 70 years old, and I'm surrounded by beautiful women. Thank you, God. And then the thing I learned was this. I wonder if I would have been more specific and said, please surround me by beautiful women now. <laughs> if I'd have been surrounded by beautiful women when I was a freshman in high school. <laughs> So I leave you with this. Pray and pray often. And don't ever forget you can be specific with God. If you're wanting to pray for the church, if you're wanting to pray for your parents, if you're wanting to pray for each other, that's great. Now, I wouldn't be a teacher if I didn't give you some homework. So here it is. This is what I want you to do. I want you to think about what I'm going to say right now. Wouldn't the world be a better place if everyone would just stop and say to the face, I love you and you are my friend. Think about that for a moment. And here's your assignment. Before you lay your head on your bed tonight, on that pillow, after you said your prayers inside the bed, asking to be surrounded by beautiful girls. <laughs> your assignment is stop and say to a face, I love you and you are my friend. And do never forget, don't ever forget, you are important and what you do matters. I thank you for your attention. I thank you, Margaret, for the great honor of being here today after 25 years. What a great job you have done. What a great job you have done. And I can't thank you enough. Continue to do that. And remember, I love you. And I hope you're God bless you all. Thank you very much.